Hello my friends, welcome again to my video channel. Today we will continue our work on the EK070. As we agreed in the video part 2 at the end of part 2, we will do some more efforts. Fiona agreed. This unit deserves it. Again, it's uh, a unique piece of equipment. So let's start. You know Sisyphus from the Greek mythology. The bad electrolytics have been these four. This is a part number. Sach number is a part number ending with, with 6175. And I look in the manual for the other units whether there is also 6175 appearing. Page by page. I cannot avoid it because I don't have this as an in an electronic uh, as a data PDF or similar where I could search. I cannot search. I have to do this by hand. Page by page. First result in the control unit, which is on the front panel, I found similar ones. Not the same one. We have here 100 microfarad 40 volt. I found here same manufacturer, the Röderstein. 100 microfarad, 16 volt, with a different number of course. But this could be the same manufacturer and the same problem. Here we have C8 and C5. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, I will uh, note it down in a paper and see where I find other such uh, Rüderstein capacitors. And now bingo in the PLL unit number two. We have the same 100 microfarad, 40 volt. Same part number as we have here, 6175. There are also a lot of Rödersteins uh, in these uh, in the other units with different values. Also 100 microfarad, but uh, less voltage. So I'm quite sure. We have, we have some problems in the other units. Well, we have seen that there are some Röderstein capacitors in these units. And especially in this unit, PLL number 2, Regelschleife 2, PLL number 2, we have exactly the same type we had in the power supply. And all four in the power supply were faulty, so I will take out first this unit this module, check this capacitor and then decide how to go uh, to go further because there are also other Rödersteins in it, not only this type. So we will see what's going on. That's my tranquilizer. The unit is out. Here we have the electrolytic in discussion. This is another Rüderstein 100 microfarad, only 16 volt. This has 40 volt. This is the type which was bad. Here we have two other suspicious types, and this one it's a Fraco, as I see. Okay, the other Fracos were good, but first I take out this one and check it. Guess what it is 120 microfarad, quality factor 17. This capacitor is perfect. I will solder it back. And now just to compare it, I brought the capacitor back and now I measure it inside the circuit to see which influence the circuit has. And we can see, we see nothing, now we can see it. Capacity 120, but quality is only 3. So the quality decreases considerably. The other one, I check it just inside. Should also have 100 microfarad. Quality 8, this is also okay. The real quality is much better. This one should have, I uh, don't know, this is 470 microfarad, could, could be, yes. 
C30. What is C30? 470 microfarad, yes. That's also okay. Quality is okay, cannot be cannot be measured, but a, a rough check shows us these other tools. Can measure it here. Plus. quality in this case is 1 28 microfarad should have should have 22 okay but it has a bad quality mm. this one should have 100 microfarad and 14 uh, the quality is okay I think all four electrolytics in this board are okay. No reason to swap them. The next unit is the input unit, the RF unit, where the antenna is connected. We have the uh, switching, I think it's the attenuator. Here we have the filter unit and the manufacturer provided two handles. There are screws. When we remove the screws, we can take it out. These are the filters, filter units for the various bands, here and here. There are also some electrolytics on board. We can see it here, here, here and inside for electrolytics. One that looks a little bit suspicious. There's some dirt on it. What is it? Is it acid or not? Looks suspicious. These two are clean, but this one is a little bit... Okay, I will take it out and measure it. And the fourth one is here. But for this purpose, I have to take out the shield on the bottom side, you see. Everything is in chambers. A lot of screws. Screws, screws, screws everywhere. Absolutely tight, mechanically and electrically. Absolutely top quality. This is the output filter. 80, what is it? 81.4 megahertz. Where is the first mixer? I think the mixer could be here. I'm not sure. One moment. Yes, that's it. Here we have the ring mixer. These two transistors are the driver from the local oscillator, which is obviously fed in here. Then we have here a ring mixer, two ferret cores. I see here four diodes. This is the output and this is the filter, 81.4 megahertz. This is the output to the IF. So we have here the RF input chain, mixer. It's a ring mixer, obviously. And the quartz filter in the output 81.4 megahertz and the output here. Well, but our focus in the moment is the are the electrolytics. But this electrolytic is okay, 107 microfarad, quality factor 25, as it should. Don't know why it looks so so strange on the outside. Some dirt, maybe. And the other two also have plus and minus. Ninety five, and quality of nineteen, that's okay. And the other one. Minus plus. Two 
200 2 microfarad. Is it 200 microfarad? No, 100. Maybe there is a second one in parallel. Could be this one. Measures also 200. Okay. These two caps are in parallel. But they are obviously okay. But I don't know what this third is. The cap is not bulged. It is flat on the top. I don't see any signs of overloading. Suspicious. Can I wipe it away? Is it only dust or is it more than dust? It seems that it is only dust, but how it came in here, do we have a problem in the, the chassis? Is there any ventilation? No, don't see any ventilation. The other two are clean. I see you can uh, clean it from the surface, so this dust was applied to the capacitor from the surface, from outside, maybe during manufacturing process or so. I can clean it, so it is not coming from inside, from the electrolytic side. It's coming simply from outside. Now it is clean. Okay. No panic, don't panic. And the quality is perfect. When I take this filter part, it slides in without problem. Soft squeeze. Holes are all in line. They fit perfectly. No tolerances. Top quality built for eternity. Here we have the PLL loop one with the reference oscillator, 10 megahertz. And here we have the input for the external reference, can be chosen extern, intern. And here's the frequency alignment. It's a 10 turn trim, trim pot, this blue one. So obviously the oscillator is called, controlled by a, by a VCO voltage for a barricap or similar. Well, I checked these three electrolytics are also okay, 47, 100 and 470. They also look good. No problem. Next unit is the IF filter section, the selectivity. We have eight filters. Have you ever seen such a bunch of filters? Never. We have here 300, 150 hertz, 300 hertz. This is 3 kilohertz. Then we have here plus and minus 3.4 kilohertz, 600 hertz, 1.5 kilohertz, and 6 kilohertz. This receiver makes the SSB. Switching between LSB and USB, not by the BFO, it makes it with a filter. So it switches this filter or this filter. The manufacturer, I've never heard, Cathodian, England. Uh -huh. Never heard. Well, we have here the input of the IF. I think this one, 81.4 megahertz. The oscillator is 80 megahertz, it's fed in here. Here we have the ring mixer. This is the output. Fed to the relays of the uh, filter and then it's fed back. And here we have uh, two transistors as a power amplifier and the output is the IF filters have 1.4 megahertz. 
81.4 MHz ist die First IF, 80 MHz ist der Oscillator, 1.4 MHz ist die IF Chain. Und das ist der Output. Hier haben wir etwas für einen Panorama Adapter. Well, we have here only, as I have seen, two electrolytic caps. These two, this is a joke between both. And here I have seen some signs of soldering. Here, here, these transistors, the output transistors, have been resoldered. Don't know why. Also here, and all the filters have been resoldered. really don't understand why here also some was in someone was in there and resolded it mm -hmm. was there a problem with the filters can't imagine can't imagine anyhow i will now check the electrolytics each electrolytic has 10 microfarad Let's check the quality. They are in parallel with the joke we have seen. So we have 20 microfarad at 120 hertz. Quality is 5. So I think that these two electrolytics are also okay. This unit is the IF amplifier, which is behind the filters we have seen. In general, we have here two IF amplifiers because we have a second sideband. We have seen we have two sideband filters, therefore we have two separate um, IF amplifiers. One is for the, let me say, standard sideband for AM and so on, and the other one is for the second sideband. I don't know in the moment whether it is LSB or USB, not, not so important. It is always the input. Here we have the output. Uh, sorry, input. And this is the output. This is the input and this is the other output which goes to the uh, pin head. Here we have the switching of the AGC modes. There are no electrolytics on board. As I see only we have two tantalum caps, which I will check now. Each one of them should have should have what should it have? 47 microfarad. Let's take this one. Here is plus. Forty-four point seven. Okay, a little bit, some loss maybe, but a quality of fifty-three. That's that is okay. Forty-four point seven instead of forty-seven. This is within the tolerance. I have no problems with it. And the other one has. 44. You can see it, 44. And quality, 53. Well, these caps are okay. We have here the demodulator part. There are several electrolytics in it. This one here is one of the suspicious. Riederstein, yes, I will check it. Here we have another which is rather old. There's the SSB demodulator and FM demodulator for um, TTY. Yes, the whole and the IF stage. I think this is the uh, AF audio frequency stage. This one, yes, for the loudspeaker. Well. First, I will check all the electrolytics, measure them, and see what's going on. First one is this. Old Röderstein should have 470 microfarad. 16 volt, but that's not important. 470. And it has, oh, 312. Quality 3.7. Well, the quality is affected by the circuit around, but the capacity is a little bit low, 312. <laughs> well, I will check this one on the other end. Should have 10. 
microfarads. The other I will check from the bottom side. It should have 10. And it has, it has, you can see it. You can't see it. 11 and call it the 18. So this one is obviously okay. And the other ones I will check from the bottom side. Should have 22, has 26. That's okay. This one. This one here is where is plus. Plus is on the right side. Should have also 22. Plus and minus. 25, quality 14, that's also okay. Twenty-seven. That's it. Well, we have only one candidate. This one. I will take it out, check it outside, and I think I will replace it. And yes, it has three hundred thirty measured at hundred twenty hertz. Quality is five, not so good at one kilohertz. It has only hundred forty microfarad. Quality is less than one. Just to compare it with a new one. Quality is 19 at 120 Hz and at 1 kHz, 370 and quality is still 3, so this new one is, is better than the old one, the old one has to go. Ha! At least one capacitor found, at least one. The new cap is in, by the way it's a 40 volt version. The old one had uh, 16 volt only, this is 40 volt, 470 microfarad. Okay, that's it for the demo to later. By the way, this capacitor we swapped, <coughs> the demo to later unit is a C36 and it's the output capacitor for the loudspeaker, the coupling capacitor, you see, from the, from the amplifier. And we had only 330, so when this capacity is further decreasing, the sound gets a little bit... Mm, okay, passes are missing. Now we have the control unit. Again, I can say we already checked the battery. And when it was open... Okay, do not erase it. When it was open, I should have checked these two electrolytics would have made the work a little bit easier. Now I have to reopen it and check the two electrolytics. Should have 100 microfarad. Minus plus. 221. Um, yes, maybe it is in, again in parallel with the second one. Which is here and also has 100 microfarad yes 220 so these electrolytics are in parallel I will have a look into the schematic whether it is true is it true is it true well I see I have a different version This is not the same. The layout is different. Yes. We have a different layout. Okay, so I can assume that these electrolytics are in parallel, but uh, I'll do a counter check. I will connect both pins to pin to ground. Here's 220. When I go to this one, it's also 220. So these electrolytics are definitely parallel. Minus is grounded. 
was there are no other electrolytics or tantalums on board I see nothing else so maybe the minus 5 volt is not present here ah yes first muster it's a test version with 27.3.2 ah seems to be a new processor or so new in those days yes maybe if this is a newer version and therefore we have a different layout all these units have been checked regarding faulty electrolytics or tantalum caps we only found one in the demodulator unit this one was the coupling capacitor for the loudspeaker this is a power supply we have already swapped all electrolytics electrolytics and uh, all tantalums so we still have only one unit to check and this is the front panel the control unit with the keypad and so on there are also some electrolytics on it i have to look how to remove it so i can check also this board the last unit which has to be checked is the front panel on the bottom side here we have the connector the plug which can be unplugged and then the front panel can be taken out there are some electrolytics and as, as I have seen in the schematic one tantalum on this board on the rear side so we can check it but I have to take it out four screws and this should be sufficient to, to flip it out. We have a C5 and C8 each has 100 microfarad and here we have a small tantalum cup C12 it should have 4.7 microfarad the accessibility is a little bit difficult one is behind this flat cable okay that's easy but the other one is underneath this encoder i have to look how to how to come to it let's check c8 at 120 hertz you can see it okay quality of 10 and the other one is c5 this one 96 and the quality of 10 9.5 it's also okay and now the tantalum cap c12 which is this one and this one should be 4.7 4.9 and a quality of 3 isn't it better? yes it's right ok there is obviously something parallel but the capacity is fulfilled and the quality factor also the quality uh, could be measured only outside the uh, board when we have high quality factors well obviously these uh, electrolytics and uh, the one tantalum is also okay in the board in the and con the control unit front panel so we can reassemble it now a smooth job reinstall all screws one two three four five six and so on this is only the button cover top cover is the same a lot of screws well let's start now we are at the end of this project let's make a summary we had some faulty electrolytics as we have seen and the mainly in the power supply so um, we decided to swap them some tantalums have been swapped we only have one problem that's the display. The display here in the corner you see. Mm, okay, it, it's getting worse and worse. But I have no idea what, what to do with the display. It's only needed for the BFO offset frequency if the BFO is shifted. It's for the address when this receiver is remote controlled. Then it has an address on the IEEE bus and this is the uh, channel number when storing and recording frequencies in a channel in the memory okay not 
not essential for the function of this receiver, so I will skip this topic and I want to keep the budget low and again I have no idea what to do. Well, that's the end of this project. It was very interesting for me to have it on my workbench. Such a transceiver decades ago, it was one of my dreams. Now I have the dream on my workbench. It was a pleasure for me, hope also for you, to see how it is built, how it works. I will do some further testing with it, play a little bit around on the bands, listen to it, what, what I can receive. Stay healthy, stay tuned, see you on this channel.